Alright, so today I'm going to show uh, you guys how to play uh, Eruption, Alternate Picked by Steven Taranto. He just put a video up the other day. Uh, I thought it was it's a really great uh, exercise. And what's really cool is in the video, it's super apparent uh, that he's doing two-way pick slanting. And the guy is just phenomenal at it. Uh, he's got this ability to do this, you know, we call it two-way pick slanting, or as Troy uh, more recently called it, uh, two-way escape motion, uh, which is cool because, you know, if you are a uh, downward pick slanter, kind of like myself, you'll escape the string on an upstroke. As you can see, I'll pull myself out of the strings with the pick uh, angle down here. Uh, if you are an upward pick slanter like this, like there's quite a few people like that, all your down strokes will escape the string. Uh, inevitably with these patterns, because we're playing odd numbers of notes um, and going across strings, we're going to have to do both. Um, and this is very apparent in his video. Um, and so just a little background, he just posted this on his Instagram. Um, if you guys don't follow him on Instagram, you absolutely should. It's just an amazing source of inspiration. Um, he's got some absolutely incredible things he does. Um, but he said this particular one was brought on by another really good guitar player, an idea uh, from Jake Lowe. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys know Jake Lowe either. He's another absolute uh, phenomenal guitar player. Um, he's played with uh, Plenty, and he does. Uh, he's the main guitarist in uh, the Helix Nebula, um, and of course, uh, Stephen himself uh, has probably one of my favorite solos ever on a Plenty album, um, Selenium Force, I think is what it's called. Uh, that I always thought that was Plenty. I had no idea, I, and I I remember I first time I ever heard that song was in the shower. I was listening to Pandora. And I just couldn't believe uh, the solo I was hearing. It was absolutely incredible. Uh, there's a few shapes that we'll talk about. I've, I tabbed it out, and I'll have the tab on the screen in just a second here. And I tabbed it out uh, in a way that he's in the way that he's playing it. Now I would I <laughs> I think that there's some easier ways to play some of those shapes. Um, and uh, we'll talk about all the different ways to play uh, the various shapes. But uh, man, what what prowess that guy has! Just unbelievably good. Let's pull this back up real quick. Um, uh, another thing to notice here is that, uh, and we'll scroll down just a smidge. So another thing to notice here, and an important thing I would say, is his picking hand right here. Let's watch his picking hand as he does this. <laughs> So you can obviously see when he's doing these shapes here, he's having to escape the string two different ways, right? The first time, and he has to roll it back up. So we get, we're going, you see his hand is downward pick, pick slant at first, upward pick slant at second. Downward pick, so he gets this little motion going here, right? Uh, think about that as we're watching this a little bit more. And so what he's having to do there, because he's picking odd numbers of notes here, he's having to escape the strings uh, both on an upstroke and a downstroke. Um, and this is something you see a lot with people who uh, try to alternate pick everything, uh, like Steven here. Um, and, say, you know, Anton Aperin, who's somebody else who I give a bunch of shout outs to because he is just incredible. Um, and somebody who has pushed me in the endeavor of wanting to alternate pick everything. Um, he is somebody else who, uh, while he does have a little bit of a different technique, you can see him, maybe not as pronounced as Steven here, but you can see him escaping the strings uh, on, uh, in two different ways as well. All right, so let's get the uh, tab going here. All right, so here we have the first few measures. Um, and this is at 120 BPM, which is really fast for alternate picking, as we're doing here, especially when we're doing two-way pick slanting or two-way escape motion. Um, and it's important to know that we're right on that cusp of where we kind of have to start getting this like twitch motion going on in the wrist, right? Um, we're past the feel of going out and in on the guitar, and we're kind of more so getting this, uh, this trying to get this this jitteriness in our wrist, if you will. Now, it's it, you have to keep it loose, and this is not an arm motion. This is a wrist motion for sure, as far as uh, the technique that I employ uh, is concerned. But um, let's, uh, let's try to go through this first little bit here. As you can see, um, he's doing this on two strings and it's odd, it's odd groupings of notes, right? Three notes, uh, with the new note being on the new string, right? One, two, new note, one, two, new note. Uh, so he's going to work through this and I'll play this slow for you. And the way that he's playing this at first is with his pinky and his ring finger on the same fret. Um, because obviously we have six, six, nine, nine, uh, which generally this is something you would avoid. Or if I was doing something a little bit slower, I might just roll this finger, but it starts to get a little jumbly there if you, you know, the notes don't separate as well as if you use two fingers. So. And you can see my picking, first one, and then I have to roll back into that note. 
roll back into this one. Right? All right, make those motions a little bit bigger for you here. So you see, I'm. You can see it in the video with uh, Steven as well. He's he's rolling his wrist through in this way, right? <laughs> Again, you can see that. Uh, and the cool thing is, is the this riff is not super complicated. Uh, you know, the tapping, the tapping part of this would be one finger moving up, bass moving up. So it depends on the notes that we're moving up and down, right? When that single note moves up, that's the note that's on the B string here. And obviously the bass is the note that's on, I say the bass is in the two notes that are below uh, are on the G string. And so we kind of move this up in the same normal fashion that Eddie played it himself. Uh, all right, moving on to the next one. We have uh, up to, this one is the tough one for me at least, right? Because you're having to use, now I cheat a little bit and you can use your, if you want to, you can use your. Steven does this. He uses his ring and his pinky, which this is an awkward shape for me. So this one note here, I'm pivoting around it. Which is not something you run into a ton uh, with your pinky and your ring finger, and so it requires more of them than usual, and it's definitely a challenge. Uh, so we play that we play that a little bit here, um, so, and then we move to where we have the opposite here. So we're gonna shift these notes like this, same bottom note. Now here, what Stephen does, and you'll see, I have 15 written here uh, to stretch up to to stretch up to here, which I think is the easier thing because we're going there anyway. Sorry, uh, yeah. Right, we're gonna stretch to there. If you have a problem with that stretch, uh, and it's you know it's no problem at all. Uh, Steven himself does his middle finger right here on the tenth fret on the E string. Right, which now <laughs> I would say this is much more challenging. And so we're moving up now to where we have to employ this middle finger on the new string, or again reach up, right? Or now we're up to the new note here, which have we made it there yet? Oh, uh, we gotta do 11, 15. Right, same thing here, we can use a middle finger on the 12th fret, and then we're back up. We're on to the, uh, so this is all pretty much the same shape over and over again uh, that we're doing with one new note sometimes, right? Right? Sometimes we have that new note, which again, you can stretch up for, or you can just use that middle finger for. Um, now the fun part. This one, uh, so Steven, the way that he plays it, I find it to be extremely difficult. Because as we did in the beginning here, we have, we have to use these two fingers on the same fret. Which I remember Sean Lane doing a, uh, an interview, this is probably uh, late 90s, early 2000s, probably late 90s actually. Um, and he was talking about using uh, using two different fingers on the same fret, um, and uh, sometimes even using two different fingers for the same note on the same fret, depending on what he's needing to fret. Um, and you know, I as a as a young budding guitar player, my mind was blown. I couldn't believe it. Uh, and so inevitably, it's been one of those uh, dreaded things as I've gone through my guitar career. However, it's not so bad if you allow yourself to have a little bit of uh, space there. Uh, if you were watching earlier in this video, I did the dreaded thing, which was, you hear that sometimes, right? Because your finger might get over the fret just a smidge here, not leaving enough room. Uh, I would recommend trying to come at it, instead of being at a downward angle here, we really angle the hand here, and even maybe even lock the thumb in to really provide enough room here, enough space for these two fingers. And so we're doing the same thing in this new section here, except with our middle finger. Uh, which I find to be very difficult. Um, I, there's another tab that I'm developing right now and I, I have uh, written in a different way in my own uh, endeavor to play this uh, really cool exercise here. Uh, and there, I don't see any reason not to just uh, play it all on one string. That's really not that bad of a stretch. Uh, it's, an, it's a pretty easy pentatonic stretch that I'm sure uh, most people watching this would find themselves doing. Uh, like that. Um, but again, that's not how Steven plays it, and we're doing a lesson on how Steven plays it, which is like this. Right? As you see me messing up there. So this, this section here, 
this little part here is going to move down, as you see in the tab there. Uh, 12, 15, 11, 14, 10, 13. 912 okay uh, the 12 stays the same and as as we watch the video with Steven if you go back and you watch it and I'll have the link uh, in the description as well uh, he plays with his middle finger for most of it until he gets to the end part and plays with his pinky I'm not sure if he plays that he might play that with his ring finger which would be totally cool there's no reason not to and then we're back to where we're using uh, our ring and pinky on the same uh, on the same fret here okay uh, this this part is very difficult And if I was going to do this the way that I figured this out before was, again, doing it on one string. And then moving my section up. Um, so now we're moving to where we just move this thing down by whole steps. Uh, and so we, what we had... We're just going to move that same thing down and starting on, as the tab says right there, 10, 13, 10. Sorry about that. Uh, and then eight, eleven, eight. Same, same exact thing. Uh, you know, we're doing, we're employing the same exact technique every time. Uh, same shape, same everything. Sorry about that. That's very difficult. Um, and so, as we get through there, we're going to come back to this that main section we were doing before, where we are. Uh, nine, twelve, and twelve. Right. We're doing the same thing with our pinky and our ring finger on the same note. But we're moving that bass down like that, right? So 9, 12, 12, and 8, 8, 11, 12. And so uh, in the song, uh, as, as the song goes... to this part here right now uh, Steven slows down a little bit here while he's playing this to kind of like I think you know I'm sure he could just shred through it if he wanted to but I think it's just to build it builds a little tension so we go back and forth there with those notes and it's the same thing here right right back and forth uh, now at the end of the song Steven does uh, a little pattern which I've written out here down to a chord now of course he's playing on a seven string and I think the E string is tuned in drop D I assume that the B string is probably tuned to drop A um, I honestly didn't look into it too much but this sounds like the chord that he's playing the one that I have written there um, and so we're, we're gonna go back and forth into that and then he just simply comes down uh, he just all he goes down right in E minor little raise seven there uh, in the harmonic part. Uh, and the chord that he's playing here, from what I can tell, it seems like he's barring and he's grabbing. That sounds right to me. So I guess we could call that like an 11 chord, if you, if that's kind of how you want to look at this. But again, uh, that's a, a really cool, like jazzy ending, I think, to something that's pretty metal. Uh, and so I'm going to be putting a uh, pack together on my Patreon. Uh, I'll have a link in the description for it. It'll have a bunch of classical pieces and things like that. Obviously, this is not my my lick. This is not my exercise. This is not the way that I would uh, come up with playing it. Uh, so, of course, I don't mind sharing this with you guys at all. And I hope the tab was uh, helpful to you all. And uh, I have to say that um, I'll put a version of this, that the way that I would play it, the way that I kind of discussed a little bit in, uh, in that pack, along with some classical pieces that really go over some two-way pick slander, two-way escape motion, uh, and some other cool things, uh, like some um, uh, cool ways to play single note uh, arpeggios on the bottom three strings without feeling like you're uh, having to escape both times. Uh, but yeah, uh, a lot of cool stuff coming in the future too. Uh, drop me a uh, sub and you will be in tune with all of that. I uh, hope you guys have a good one.